Module 4, Lessons Learned from CIS Integration for HSS. In this module, we will explore the traditional barriers that can hinder successful partnerships and identify the key components that foster effective collaboration between climate and health actors. By the end of this module, you will be able to identify common challenges encountered when integrating CIS into health systems and describe key components for building successful partnerships to advance CIS integration for HSS. Despite growing awareness of how climate impacts health, the integration of climate information services into health decision-making is still nascent and under-resourced. In fact, while most national meteorological and hydrological services provide some climate data to health sectors, only a few collaborate effectively to deliver tailored solutions that meet the sector's specific needs. According to the WMO, only 31% of national meteorological and hydrological services have the capacity to deliver tailored climate services rather than just data to meet the specific needs of the health community. This gap highlights the challenges involved in developing and effectively using CIS for health system strengthening. These challenges fall into four main areas. To truly maximize their impact, we need to focus on several key areas. Policy and governance, capacity and collaboration, finance, research assessment and monitoring. Importantly, CIS are tools, not a guaranteed fix. We must be mindful of challenges and address them. Effective climate information services hinge on fostering strong communities of practice. This means bringing together experts from diverse disciplines, climate specialists, public health professionals, policymakers, and other key stakeholders to collaboratively develop solutions. However, a major challenge is that the climate and health sectors often operate in silos. This lack of coordination makes it difficult to gather reliable data, conduct meaningful analysis, and translate those insights into actionable health policies. Restrictive data policies can further bottleneck the process, limiting the flow of essential climate information to decision makers. In some cases, governments might tightly control access even to historical data that's crucial for establishing baselines and developing effective CIS. Ultimately, we need improved policies, robust governance structures, and a willingness to take action on the climate information we have. Only then can we support decision makers who are facing heightened climate-related health threats. One of the biggest hurdles to effective CIS implementation is a lack of investment in human capacity. Developing tailored climate products and delivering actionable insights requires specialized skills in climate science, data management, modeling, and most importantly, the ability to translate complex information for health decision makers. This expertise is often scarce within health agencies. Even where climate data is available, it may not be tailored to the specific needs of health sector workers. We need professionals skilled in not only interpreting climate and health data, but also in presenting it in clear, compelling ways that directly support health policy and program design. Additionally, high staff turnover with relevant ministries can disrupt progress and make it difficult to buy long-term institutional knowledge and expertise in CIS for HSS. Traditional funding structures simply aren't designed to support the cross-sectorial collaboration needed for effective climate information services in health. Dividing responsibilities without a plan for joint budgeting and action leads to mismatched priorities and inefficient investments. Globally, there's a critical lack of funding for climate health CIS initiatives. With just two-tenths of a percent of global bilateral and multilateral adaptation finance, the health sector receives a tiny fraction of available climate adaptation resources and bureaucratic hurdles, combined with a lack of strong advocates, further hinder development. Even with funding, rigid financial systems often fail healthcare systems in the face of climate events. More flexibility is needed to reallocate resources like personnel and medical supplies to effectively respond and ensure health system continuity. Anticipatory financing offers a promising way forward. By releasing funds before a crisis hits, we can shift from reactive scrambling to proactive resilience building. This not only improves response, but also lessens the long-term need for humanitarian aid 
creating a more efficient use of limited resources. Even with access to climate information, several challenges make it difficult to effectively apply it to health decision making. The first challenge are data silos, disconnected systems, and a lack of common data standards create fragmentation. This means health data and climate data often aren't integrated, limiting our ability to see the big picture and plan appropriately. The second challenge is quality and resolution. Data quality, especially in low- and middle-income countries, can be inconsistent. We need a balance of broad-scale data for strategic insights and granular localized data to inform action on the ground. Additional research assessment and monitoring considerations include evaluating impact. Many factors influence health outcomes, making it hard to isolate the specific role of climate change and variability. This lack of clarity risks misinformed investment decisions that fail to effectively protect health. Research gaps. We have insufficient data from the most climate vulnerable regions and not enough research on how seasonal climate shifts impact disease patterns. This obscures our understanding in the areas where it's needed most. To overcome barriers and challenges, we recommend focusing efforts and investments on policy coordination and governance, Promote cross-sectorial collaboration for integrated decision-making to overcome structural, financial, and technical barriers. Capacity building. Invest in technical skills for CIS in use in the health sector. Building climate literacy in the health community and vice versa. Communications and dissemination. Engage with end users continuously to adapt and improve CIS and both institutionalize and localize CIS for health system strengthening. Operational services. Support data harmonization and interoperability efforts to ensure information can be used, trusted, and mainstreamed. Monitoring, evaluation, and learning. Commit to continuous learning, impact assessments, and iterative planning with adequate funding budgeted.